And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. In a moment, Act One of The Lost Ship, written especially for suspense by Erwin Lewis. It's a sharp curve ahead, Harry. Be careful. Don't worry, I see it. something. What? Sounds like a siren. Harry, it does sound like a siren, doesn't it? Shut up. Let me listen. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe it's the police. How could it be? We lost some hours ago. I don't know, but it's getting louder. Can't take any chances. We better get off this main road fast. Yeah, that looks like a cut off. Oh, but it leads straight across the desert. It isn't much of a road. No time to be choosy. Hang on. We can't cut back. Those police might be patrolling the highway. We'll wait until dark. Oh, can't you slow down? I'm, I'm getting sick. It's just a little longer, honey. I want to put as much distance between us and the highway as possible. Oh. Oh. What happened? I don't know. I'll take a look. What is it? Broken spring. Oh, what do we do now? We can't stay here. Grab the bag and let's go. Oh, where? We're on a road of some sort. It's got to lead someplace. Let's try those hills. What about the suitcase? Leave it in the car. This little bag is all the luggage we need. A lot of good it'll do us out here. Where there's a road, there's bound to be a house of people. What's in this bag talks any language. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Any oh, I'm trying, Harry, to be... Oh, it's killing me. Oh, I've got to rest a minute. All right. Here, sit on my jacket. I'll get it all dirty. So what? We'll buy a thousand jackets once we hit the border. Sit down. Oh, oh what a relief. Oh, it's so hot. What's that? That sounds like a coyote. Don't worry about it. Oh, Harry, I'm scared. Now, don't go hysterical. Well, aren't you frightened? Even a little? Sure I am. Down to my shoes. Oh, we must have been crazy. There's 50,000 arguments in this little bag to prove we're not crazy. We'll spend the rest of our lives running. Once we get to Mexico, we'll stop running. But we're leaving our home, our friends, everything and everybody we know. Is it worth it? What are we giving up? A stinking two-room flat with peeling paint and crawling roaches this big? You won't miss that for a minute. You think I enjoyed standing in that teller's cage, handing out money all day long to little people who had no more right to it than I did? They weren't stealing. But that, don't, don't go moral on me. Listen, I'm past 40. A man gets to that age, he gets tired wanting things and not being able to afford them. Hey, isn't that smoke up there? Where? Over to the right, between those two hills. Sure it is. That's chimney smoke. I'll bet there's a house up there. Come on, Viola. Well, hi, folks. Kind of off the tourist trail, ain't you? We, uh, we were wondering. Uh, no sense wandering outside. Come in. Come in. Make yourselves comfortable. Yeah, your car broke down, huh? Why do you say that? Well, nobody'd walk here if they could ride. And take a look at your shoes. Lady, I'll bet your feet are full of blisters. Uh, you're so right. Well, take off your shoes and sit down by the fire. I'll poke it up. Starting to get nippy now. The sun's gone down. Oh, thank you. I was uh, fixing myself some supper. Pork and beans. Be mighty proud if you'll join me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Tonley, Pete Tonley. I'm Harry Turner, and this is Mrs. Turner. I'm pleased to meet you. I'll open another can of beans. It ain't much, but it's spilling. You live here all alone, Mr. Tonley? Pete, ma'am, <laughs> no sense being formal. Yep, yep, I live here all by my lonesome. Going on 20 years, I reckon. 20 years? Uh, you ever have visitors? Oh, once in a while. Expect a neighbor of mine, uh, 
Let's see now. Uh, the day after tomorrow. Neighbor? Yeah, Sam Higgins. Lives about 40 miles from here. Drops in regular twice a year. What, what do you do about supplies, food and things? Well, uh, I got a jeep in the back. I use it to go to town once a month for supplies. A jeep? Yeah, yeah. Guess you didn't see it coming up here. I'll drive into town first thing in the morning and get Bill Jenkins from the garage to come out and fix up your car. Can't you go right now? By the time I get back, it'd be pitch dark. No, no, better wait till tomorrow. Well, let's see if the beans is... Oh, say, <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope you don't mind ten plates. Yeah, well, let's dig in. Yeah, you know, I think those beans are pretty good. Uh, either of you folks care for any more? Uh, no, no, thank you. No, thank you, Peter. Here, you know, I'll give you a hand with the dishes. No, don't bother, ma'am. Won't take more than a minute. I'd like to get that Jeep and take off right no. now. Oh, we couldn't do that. He's a nice old man. I don't like spending all night here. Safe enough? Here, let me know when you folks is ready to hit the hay. Uh, I'll bunk down in the shed and back. Oh, no, we wouldn't think of putting you to such trouble. Oh, don't worry about it, ma'am. I can sleep anywhere, anytime. Besides, that, that bed ain't much softer than the floor. Pete, don't you ever get lonely living here by yourself? No, no, I like it like this, just me in the hills. I spent nearly 30 years prospecting for gold. Didn't find much, but... Enough, so as I can buy a little food and the few other things they need every now and then. So why look for more? Now, most folks dream about a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Well, I got that, too, waiting for me over in the hills and the desert out there. I guess that's what you call a great beyond, huh? Oh, oh shucks, no. I, I don't mean when I'm dead. I'm talking about a real pot of gold, bigger than anything you ever seen or dreamed of, probably. In the desert? I don't understand. What is in the desert? A ship, ma'am. A great Spanish galleon. And it rides the sand dunes of the desert like it was sailing the seas again. A ship in the desert? That's impossible. I'll tell you how it was, son. There's a legend that hundreds of years ago, a Spanish ship come sailing up the Gulf of California, having come from Mexico or Peru or one of them other South American places, and as it was sailing up right close to shore, a huge storm come along, followed by a tremendous tidal wave, which swept it clean onto the desert. Must have been the granddaddy of all waves, I reckon. Well, after many years... The waters went back, leaving the ship high and dry, miles from the gulf or the river that feeds into it. In a couple of hundred years, the shifting sands have buried it, of course. But sometimes, when the wind blows up just right, it blows away a lot of the sand. And you can see the upper deck of that old ship from the top of that hill, just over there. According to the legend, too, the hold of that ship is just jam full of treasure. What a lovely story. A pretty fairy tale for children and old men. Harry, that's not a nice oh, thing to say. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. Of course, he's right. But it is a pretty fairy tale. Just so happens this fairy tale is true. <laughs> What is it, Viola? Come over here. I want to show you something. Now, what are, what are you so excited about? I was straightening out things in the cabin after you left. I found these. Coins? Yes, but what kind? Gold coins. And look at the words on them. Anza de Oro. That, that, that sounds Spanish, doesn't it? Look how old they are. Let me see. There's a date on this one. This... 1942. What kind of coins are they, Harry? Seen some like them at an exhibit. They're Spanish doubloons. Where would Pete get them? Don't you remember his story last night? What, the Spanish galleon? Don't be ridiculous. All right, how do you explain them? I can't. It 
Oh, no, it's impossible. Pete. Yeah, what's up, son? I my wife found these in the cabin. Where did they come from? Oh, oh, them things. I I reckon they come from the ship. What do you mean? Well, some years ago, a young fella come staggering in from the desert. He was in pretty bad shape. Hadn't had food or water for days, it seemed like. I tried to fix him up, but he, he was too far gone. But before he died, he moaned something about finding a ship out in the desert. I uh, found them coins in his pocket. I don't believe a word you say. You're either crazy or the biggest liar I've ever met. Harry! <laughs> Son... If you're so all fired skeptical, why why don't you climb that hill and take a look for yourself? Now, the wind seems to be coming up kind of strong. You you might be lucky. In fact, uh, I got an old pair of field glasses you can take along. But son, if you do see the ship, for your own sake, don't let it give you any fool ideas. <laughs> I can't see a thing with the wind blowing sand in my face. I doubt if there is anything to see. That doddery old man tells us a fairy tale and we buy it. <laughs> All we'll get for our troubles is our lungs full of desert. Why did I let you talk me into climbing up here? Look at my dress. Yeah, I might as well head back. Uh, that old man... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The wind is dying down. <laughs> Take a look through these glasses. Yeah. I still can't see a blasted thing but sand and sagebrush. Did you see something? Can't tell for sure. I'd like it a better focus. Fiona! What is it, Harry? I don't believe it. What, Harry? I see a broken mast and a part of a hull buried in the sand. Fiona, the old man was right. There is a ship out there in the desert. Well, I kind of thought you might see it. Haven't seen it myself in a spell. Figured it was about time for it to show up again. It was there, just like you said it would be. You've known it's there all this time, and yet you never went to look for it? Well, like I told you, son. What for? Because of the gold. All right, you do You do what you want. I'm going after that ship. No, no, that ain't sensible, son. Why not? I could see it clearly. It isn't far from here. Distances are deceiving in the desert. That ship's a lot further than it looks. And that's mighty rough country out there. It's easy to get lost. And if you run out of water, you're finished. And chances are, by the time you got to where you, you think the ship is... A sandstorm will come up and bury it under tons of sand again. You, you better forget it. Not on your life. Your Jeep is equipped with sand tires. It has gas, water, tools. That's all I need. Ma'am, I, I surely think it ain't smart. You ought to try to talk him out of it. Harry, maybe it is too dangerous. What's the danger? Because Pete can't get up enough energy to drive a few minutes into the desert to make a fortune? Oh, what about the other man who found the ship and died? I don't know anything about him, and I don't care. If there's gold in that ship, I'm going to get it. But why? We have enough now. You said so yourself. How can you compare 50,000 to what could be in that ship? And the gold's probably only part of it. Those old Spanish galleons used to come home with their hulls bulging with Inca and Mayan treasures. By God, Viola, we can be rich. We can be rich! We could make a deal with the bank, return the 50000 and go scot-free. But you'd be risking your life. It's worth it. I'm taking the Jeep. You'll see. I'll be back before night. Now, I've seen what the desert does to people who know it, son. A tenderfoot like you ain't got a chance. Thanks for the advice, Pete, but I'm going. Oh, no, Harry, wait. Listen to me. Let go, Viola. Pete, stop him, please. Yeah, your wife's right, son. You ain't thinking clear. At least wait until you can get a well-organized party together. I haven't got time. Now, get out of my way, Pete. I can't let you go alone, son. You, you'll never come back. Get out of my get way! Oh, you don't... Come on. Come on, don't get stuck. Now, it can't be much further. The rear wheels are stuck in the sand. 
Maybe I can slip something underneath. Uh, oh, the sun is strong. Yeah, the wheel has dug itself a nice little hole. Well, there's a shovel in the Jeep. If I jam it up against the tire, maybe I... Uh, here it is. Uh, well, if I just... Wait a minute, what's over that ridge? Looks like some sort of structure. Can't be a house who could live out here. I better take a look. Pete was right when he said distances were to see me. The top of this ridge looked like it was within a few yards of the Jeep, and I seemed to be walking forever. Uh, the way the heat waves make the air shimmer, I'm not even sure where I am. Uh, I'm getting to the top. Uh, now, let's find out just what I saw. There comes that wind again. Can I get the sand out of my eyes? I... That's better. Now... It's the hull of a ship. Yes, this is what I saw from the hill. Look at her buried in the sand with little more than part of the top deck visible. But it's a ship, all right. Look at the carvings on the rail. I wonder if it's safe to walk on. Yeah, it seems solid enough. And there's something inscribed in the railing. Santa Carlotta. Santa Carlotta! I found the ship! I found it! All right. Take it easy, Harry. Keep calm. This is only half the bottle. You don't know if the hull is filled with sand or what. Now, let's look for a hatch. Find a hatch and open it. It'll lead to the interior. Clear away the sand. Gotta dig the sand away. I gotta find out what I hit. Come on out, boy. The sun is beginning to set. There's not much time left. I was right. It is a hatch. Now, to get it open. Oh, it's jammed. I can't budge it. Wait a minute. Pry it open with a shovel. I can feel it giving. It's coming up. Get my hand underneath the edge. That's it. That's it. Now my other hand. No, if I can just lift it. Ah! I got it. I got it. Now, just prop it up with a the shovel. There. That's it. Oh, it's dark down there. I can't see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's the top of the ladder. wonder if it'll hold me. See the hatch opening. Ah, looks like I'm in some sort of passageway. Uh, can't see much now. A similar light. Uh, looks like a door. Open it. Huh? Furniture? Table? Looks like charts on the walls. Something over in a corner. Can't make out what it is. Looks white. Seems to glisten a little. Wonder what it is. Oh. It's a skull. <laughs> Scared the life out of me. <laughs> what was your name, Fletcher? Was it Yorick? <laughs> Did you come riding in on this ship when she hit the desert 400 years ago? <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy, Harry. Don't lose your nerve now, boy. The wind seems to be getting stronger. Maybe I'd better go back and get some help. No, no, not until I find what I came for. Hey, you, York. Maybe you can tell me. Where's the treasure, huh? Maybe you were left here to guard it, huh? Don't talk. All right, let's take a look. Another door. Duck. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. See what 
Yorick was guarding. Wish I brought a flashlight. This lighter doesn't help much. What? What's this? Looks like some sort of chest. 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 Okay, now to see what's inside. Mother of heaven. Can't be real. Gold, jewels, diamonds, a chest full. I found it. I found it. Magnificent sight. Coins, jewels. Fill my pockets. Cram them in. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. There's a burlap bag in the Jeep. I'll get that. Oh, by all of Pete. What do you say when I come staring and carrying this magnificent fortune? Ah, can't hold any more. I gotta get back to the Jeep. Oh, so long, York. Don't be sad. I'll be back. Better. The flame is getting low on the lighter. Well, I won't need it much longer. What? What was that? Uh, the wind isn't so loud. Where, where's the ladder to the hatchway? So dark. Oh, oh. What was this? The shovel. Oh, the wind blew the hatch down. Well, that's all right. I'll just climb up and force it open. Ah, here's a ladder. There's a ladder. Now, ah, here, here's the hatch. Now, let's get it open and get back to the Jeep. Seems to be stuck. I, I think it's giving a little. I have to rest a minute. Catch my breath. The wind is really getting strong out there. Wind. Sand. Oh, my God. It'll blow the sand on the deck. It'll cover the hatch. Pile it up. Tons and tons of sand. I've got to get the hatch open now. Push harder, Harry! Push harder, harder! Listening to The Lost Ship, written especially for suspense by Erwin Lewis. Suspense is produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Heard in tonight's story were Matt Cooper, Gene Gillespie, and Bill Adams. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical direction by Fred Turner. This is Stuart Metz speaking. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Three times each weekday, share a woman's world with Betty Furness on the CBS Radio Network.